Are we ready for this today? All right, Megan Vogel. Anybody know who Megan Vogel is? Anybody heard of she is? Let me show you something, and we'll see if we have some technology issues. We were like the TSA. We just had to plug in the, the program. Here's Megan Vogel, 1,600-meter race. Megan won by a tremendous margin, didn't she? But that's not the race Megan won that day. Megan won an hour later when she came in last. Because you see, Megan had a sentinel event. And that sentinel event is when something happens in your life, when you have the opportunity to do the right thing or the wrong thing. And we as CPAs have been faced with those issues since we've become CPAs. When I first became a CPA back in 1772, <laughs> since I'm a little bit older than the rest of you guys, do you all remember the picture, George Washington crossing the Delaware? Do you remember that? Well, I was the front guy paddling. That's how long ago it's been. I used to remember APB1, but it was a Roman numeral one. It's a little bit different. But as you start to take a look at what happens with these sentinel events, you have to ask yourself what our responsibilities are as CPAs. So I'd like you to just sit back, think for a few seconds about what they are. First of all, we have a responsibility as a CPA to maintain the orderly functioning of commerce. Is everybody aware of that? That's actually in our code of professional responsibilities. How did we do in September 2008? J.P. Morgan Chase just recorded a $2 billion loss from derivatives. Is accounting for derivatives complicated? Just a little bit. You know, unlike everyone else, I made a small fortune in September 2008 in my IRA. The only difference is I had started with a large one. It's amazing what happens. If you just look at it in a much more positive light, it's amazing what actually happens. But as CPAs, we also have a responsibility as one of our professional standards to maintain objectivity. That's to be impartial, intellectually honest, and free of conflicts of interest. So what I want to talk to you about today is to either to lead, follow, or get the hell out of the way as a CPA. It's that simple. It's nothing more complicated than that. I'm a retired Marine Colonel. Served at, in fact, I got back from Iraq seven years ago this week. And I can tell you when you're in a combat zone, when you're dealing with other types of situations like that, you need someone who's willing to stand up and lead, but you also need people who are going to stand up and follow. But what you don't need is merely those people that are the vampires and that are going to get in the way. Drive a stake into them. The only thing I have to give Greg a caution about, you don't want to tell a Marine to eliminate them. That means something entirely different, by the way. <laughs> you know, I got out of prison a little while ago. I don't need to do that again. I just got my ankle bracelet off, Greg, so be careful. It's one of those things. Eliminate means a little bit different than most people, so just be careful. But you need the leader to follow, and I'm serious about this. General Motors was too big to fail. How are they doing? Just yesterday, I said in a group in Michigan, I said, if we're not careful, Stockton, California is going to go bankrupt. And a mayor of a large city said, never going to happen. They filed today. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, bankrupt. There's five states on the bankruptcy. And states can't technically go bankrupt, but five states are on the watch list. 1999, earnings no longer matter. Where were we as CPAs during the tech boom? Did we have a responsibility to the public? Our responsibility in maintaining the orderly functioning of commerce and to be intellectually honest, impartial, and free of conflicts of interest is because our responsibility is to the public. And that brings with it a tremendous responsibility. So 1999, Earnings no longer matter. Do they? Absolutely they do. We saw the tech bubble burst. 2005, the real estate boom was going on. And all of a sudden, we heard things like no-doc loans. When bankers are calling something a liar loan, does that give you a warning sign? What do you think? When you hear people talk about negative amortizing mortgages, 
Is that an issue? J.P. Morgan Chase, $2 billion loss. When you look at the $2 billion loss and the intellectually honest, impartial, and free of conflicts of interest, you have to ask yourself, if accounting for derivatives is complicated, is more regulations the answer? Is there a possibility we don't have enough people who understand it to begin with? Maybe we need to approach it from a different perspective. When you take a look at what happened with Wachovia Bank, and you saw their acquisition of Golden West on the West Coast at the height of the bubble in real estate. Have people been hurt by that? Absolutely. Do we know people in Frederick, Maryland on the Eastern Shore that their homes are underwater? Absolutely. Do we know people that are still struggling with the ability to pay their debts? Absolutely. So where were we? So, you know, it's real easy to look in retrospect. It's easy to look at Megan Vogel and say, that's the 1,600-meter race. I've got perfect hindsight to know where we were and what happened. We saw what Megan Vogel did. She won. But an hour later, she had a sentinel event. So let's talk about our sentinel events. We have the chance to do the right thing and alert society before the collapse occurs. Because, guys, we can prevent it. If we remain impartial, intellectually honest, and free of conflicts of interest, and remember our responsibility to the public, we too can lead our country, lead our nation, and lead the entire world out of the difficulties we have. But I can assure you of one thing, doing nothing is not an option. So let's give you what some of those might be. Do we have a student loan crisis in the United States? When I went to college, it was $700 a year. I'm an adjunct faculty member at a university, and our textbook is that much. How many of you went to college in the past 10 years? What, what was a, a semester of tuition? <laughs> you don't want to say. 25000 in U.S. dollars? Yeah, I'm just, I'm sorry, I just thought I'd pass that on. A little humor, right? If it was a euro, it wouldn't matter in a couple of months, would it, right? And if you take a look at that issue, you might ask yourself, what type of dislocations occur? You know, what happens so often, you see the polarization that occurs. Liberal, conservative, Democrat, Republican. But our responsibility goes well beyond that. We're going to have a sentinel event. So let me show you what happened to Megan Vogel and we'll talk to you about it. And this is what happened for Megan an hour later. And if the technology works, if it doesn't, you won't see it. This was a 3,200 meter race. We're building anticipation. She stopped so that we had time to talk about this. Wasn't that nice of her? She anticipated what we were going to do. Watch what she does at the end. What she did at the very end was she picked up a fellow runner, didn't know her. She was on the other side. She picked her up. She stopped what she was doing. She picked her up. She was running and put her in front of her so that Megan came in last. Megan had the opportunity to do either the right thing or the wrong thing. Was it, did, it mean that, did it mean that if she had actually just run past her, she would have done something wrong? No. But she had an opportunity at that time at a Sentinel event to stand by and do something for a fellow person who might be in need and might be in distress. We are in that exact same situation now. We are the only ones who can lead this nation at a time of great crisis and do that which is extraordinarily important and maintain the orderly functioning of commerce. Rest assured, your employees are scared. Your staff are scared. Your customers are scared. Anybody believe me on that? If we understand and exercise that leadership, the right to lead, follow. 
we can help guide people with the objectivity to make sure that we can impartially be intellectually honest and free of conflicts of interest so we can tell people the reality of what it is. Don't just merely sit back and allow yourself to become a victim of circumstance. These are the greatest times ever. I've lived in seven different nations that have collapsed in one way or another, and the greatest period of economic boom occurs because of this type of dislocation. We have a chance to do something magnificent now if we are careful with that which we know. If we act in fear, you're going to lose. If you bury your head in the sand, you're going to lose. You don't have that right, you don't have that luxury, nor do we have the time. Greece has problems. Italy has problems. Spain has problems. Society is looking at us and our responsibility to the public of maintaining the orderly function of commerce is to make sure that we can help society with our standards and our code of professional responsibilities as CPAs to understand the game that we're in and to help guide other people through it and to be objective, impartial, and free of conflicts of interest. So I hope you're gonna do something today and decide to help lead your companies, lead your governmental agencies, lead your not-for-profits in the way that needs to be done and accept that leadership challenge and do what Megan Vogel did. Help the other person, pick them up and help get them across the finish line because I can assure you of but one thing, if we divide ourselves, we're going to lose. If we remain united and we kill that vampire, we're all going to win. Thank you all very much.